Welcome to Coffee and EVs, everyone. Um, we have some special guests with us today, and uh, we've got a few topics to talk about. New EVs that came out this past week, uh, charging updates if we've got any, and I think we do have some news possibly on uh, maybe the first uh, electric police car in West Virginia. So lots of uh, interesting things starting to happen. All right, so our first uh, order uh, of, of business on our agenda is uh, Mariah Williams from Drive Electric Ohio. Um, we participated, uh, uh, Scott, Rick, and I participated in uh, their uh, regular meeting this past week and had a great time visiting with their group and listening to all the great things that they are doing in Ohio. And uh, so Mariah graciously uh, agreed to join our group this morning and kind of provide the same for us and, and provide an update. and give us a look at what's uh, working well in Ohio. So with no further ado, uh, Mariah, if you want to take it away, I'm going ahead and I'll put your uh, website address and also the Green Energy Ohio Tour website up there. And if you need to share anything, uh, it should be open. Okay, well, I, I did not prepare anything for sharing today. I've had a busy couple of days and Understand. didn't get back to that. So, okay, so my name is Mariah Williams, and I am the chapter leader of Drive Electric Columbus. Um, I grew up in the Ohio Valley, um, so I'm very familiar with West Virginia. Um, I was actually born in Moundsville, West Virginia, and then um, spent the first couple of years of my life in New Martinsville. And then we moved across to the Ohio side and I spent my formative years in Clarington, Ohio, a little town, um, just basically across from New Martinsville. Um, then we moved to Columbus and been married to Todd, who's also hopped on our call today um, for a little over 20 years. So um, Good morning. we've got two EVs of our own. Um, we first started into the foray of having a more eco-friendly vehicle with a 2010 Ford Fusion Hybrid, which our daughter who just graduated college has taken over. Um, that's now her vehicle. <laughs> and then we have added to our fleet all electric vehicles. Um, so we have a 2017 Nissan Leaf and a 2019 Kia Niro EV, which we drove to Maryland to buy. Um, and we had the first one back here in the state of Ohio and had a lot of publicity because of that um, and making that 400 mile trip to be able to find an electric vehicle to buy. Um, so then, as I mentioned, Todd's along, let him have a second to tell about himself. Hi, my name is Todd Williams. I'm also on the leadership uh, with my illustrious wife, who is the leader of the group. Um, I have a day job, and uh, I'm in IT for uh, Nationwide Insurance in downtown Columbus. But uh, this is uh, definitely a passion of, of ours uh, and has been for a long time, trying to figure out how to you know, drive either more efficiently or, or uh, in our case, now on, on electric and, and sunshine, which is... Uh, about as good as it gets, really. So you make your own fuel. And uh, but I've been going to school uh, originally. I came to came to Columbus to uh, go to school for uh, electrical engineering. So got a little bit of a double E background in 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 things, which helps uh, understanding the technologies and all that good stuff. So um, I guess that's about it. And you guys do have solar. You want to share a little bit about when you do. went solar. Yeah, yeah so you can look over top of me and you can see oh, our yeah, solar yeah. panels. So we have a rather large array. We have 42 panels. Um, 18 of those are facing south, 12 east and 12 west. So we get a good you know, amount of power throughout the day. Um, we had our initial install in November um, and went live in the start of December um, with AEP, giving us permission to get everything turned on. Um, and then the rem we had some equipment that hadn't been manufactured yet. Um, so they brought in um, the last of our inverter hubs um, in March. Yeah, so we've March. Been, been running full system that we can see um, and track and everything since then. And we have no power bills, um, even with two electric vehicles charging off of our house, um, because we, we're producing a little over a megawatt a month right now. So... Um, got got yeah. pretty good production out of our our home system. 
Last month was uh, our second negative bill. We got a credit of nine dollars and seventy four cents. Seventy some cents, yeah, from the middle of uh, middle of April to middle of May, and then the month before we had a six dollar credit. So it's actually been pretty great. Uh, we've got a not that you care, but real quick, uh, Solar Edge, uh, their their latest stuff with the backup interface. Uh, it brings the electrical service into your house, into that backup interface. So you can, in fact, back up your entire house uh, if, obviously, to, uh, to a certain degree, a certain level of power, but you can turn off loads and switch loads without having to do a lot of effort. Uh, and the whole house could be backed up. You could run anything in the house up to a certain level of power. But we've got uh, also got a battery backup. We've got the LG Chem uh, Resu 10H, uh, which is a 5 kilowatt uh, power capable battery backup on top of the energy hub inverters from solar edge uh, we've got a 7.6 and a 3.8 on the west side so 11.4 kilowatts between the 42 panels here so it's been great um loving loving not having those bills now we have a rooftop solar bill but uh, i'd rather pay that than than aap any day <laughs> all right so a little bit more on drive electric columbus Drive Electric Columbus is part of the Drive Electric Ohio initiative. Um, there are six really active clubs around the state and we've just added a seventh in Mansfield. Um, so our primary groups so for now are Athens, Cincinnati, Dayton, Northeast Ohio, Northwest Ohio, and then of course Columbus. Um, so we we try different groups out sometimes and see if we can grow, you know, the movement in other places. Sometimes it's a little bit harder. Um, Mansfield approached us a couple months ago about coming into the Drive Electric Ohio initiative. So they're kind of still trying to feel their way out with this. Um, our mission is grassroots education and outreach to advance the adoption of electric vehicles. And we use our localized groups to organize ride and drives, table at events to educate about the advantages of EVs, engage electricity providers, policymakers, and political candidates to encourage them to support pro-EV legislation and incentives. Um, we have about 350 people on our Columbus mailing list. Um, so we, we have a few contacts there. And then we have additional contacts that are on our social media accounts, such as Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, um, that don't necessarily interact with us on our newsletter for whatever be the reason. So we're, we're glad to have them in whatever form they want to come to us. Um, and then beyond National Drive Electric Week and Drive Electric Earth Day, our members get to help volunteer and support EV outreach um, with other groups. Um, we've participated with things like the Columbus Department of Neighborhoods invited us out to their Transit Thursday programs. Um, those obviously didn't run last year, but we last participated with those in 2019. Um, we would go to different communities of opportunity with them and have our electric vehicles out um, at those events where you know kids could touch them people could look under the hoods and ask questions um, because a lot of the folks in those neighborhoods don't realize they've ever seen an electric vehicle or you know out now actually have not seen electric vehicles they they just need a little bit different things so we usually took along you know like the leaf to those programs because it's a more affordable vehicle and it's available um, used a little more often than some of the other vehicles um, and then we've also helped out with things like promoting the local solar co-ops that Solar United Neighbors runs. Um, we're right now, like he's got the link up on the screen here, we're helping with the Green Energy Ohio electric vehicle tour which is coming up in June. Um, we support the other chapters with their events. We've had our Nero um, to Dayton for Earth Day just because it was a different vehicle for them to have and then we went to Athens on several occasions because they have a lower population that's in electric vehicles so it's important to get you know a little bit bigger showing um, into the communities like that. 
Um, and then we also have a relationship with the Tesla Columbus Ohio Owners Club. So we've engaged with them at several events now, um, including a joint membership meeting where we had just a whole load of us get together and an EV birthday drive by um, last year whenever, you know, nobody could gather for birthday parties. We gathered a bunch of our electric vehicles um, and we just drove by the kid's house. He had um, some special needs. So it was nice to be able to take a quiet parade past so that we didn't you know overstimulate him or have him have any type of medical issues with too much noise happening so um, in 2016 Columbus won the first ever U.S. Department of Transportation smart city program um, we ended up with something like 50 million dollars that they dedicated out to specifically the smart Columbus program to build out um, better mobility um, and help our community with growing different programs. So we've been able to help support their electrification efforts. Um, their goal was to move us from having a adoption rate of just a little over a half percent to 2%. And we exceeded that in the three years that the electrification program ran. Um, so, but we've gotten to take our personal EVs to all kinds of different festivals like Pride Fest, Arts Fest, Jazz and Ribs Fest and Earth Day Columbus with their program um, where we get to speak to people and meet, you know, a much larger audience than we could necessarily display at on our own. And then some of our members have also gotten to participate in mystery shopping with them because they have a program where they go out and test the dealerships on, you know, how they're learning about electrification. Because we kept getting a lot of calls from people saying, hey, I went to Ford to test drive, you know, their plug-in hybrid and the battery wasn't charged. So I could only test it in gas. And I went to Nissan to test drive a Leaf and, you know, no none of the leafs on the lot had a charge or they didn't know anything about them they told me you know it was really expensive to maintain and we were like okay we better help our dealerships out and start testing you know them on this so we send in you know our already ev owners we don't tell them we're ev owners they usually have us tell them that we're driving something like an acura you know something very mainstream honda and normal yeah <laughs> honda civics um if you do have another vehicle, a couple of the dealerships require insurance cards. So in our case, we pulled up our daughter's, you know, Ford Fusion <laughs> hybrid in card and took it along to that dealership because we both got assigned to shop at it since we had another vehicle available that wouldn't clue them into who we were. Um, so that worked out and it was kind of fun. Yeah, it was. There's a lot of misunderstandings out there, <laughs> Mis misinformation and misunderstandings and learning which dealers are dealing that information poorly to yeah. potential EV owners is, is important. And they, they, they did, a, did a lot of good work with that program. And they've got a, an electrified dealership program now where they actually went out and trained the dealers and, and certain representatives and sales folks on EVs. So the, that program has actually ended with it has. clean with with them but it moved over to drive electric ohio so um our master program for the state is now running it statewide instead of just with smart columbus so we're looking forward to as things open back up we can go out in person getting back in there and helping to educate them because like in my case whenever i was out in a nero hybrid with the you know young female sales person she took me up to the um, leaf chatamo <laughs> fast charger and started trying yeah. to show me how to plug in with it and i was like this this little port looks awfully small are you sure this is gonna fit and she was like oh yeah and i was like I can't even tell you no, because I'm on a mystery shop, but that is absolutely not going to fit in your J1772. So we had, you know, she was like, I think we need an adapter. They've got those out there. And I was like, oh, okay. I'm taking all these notes and I'm like, well, mm. you're not, you're not doing so hot. So it was, it was fun to see. And it was good that she was trying to show me different parts of it. But, you know, if they don't know what they're showing you, it's near useless anyways. So um, another group that we've been collaborating with for the past three or four years now is the Ohio State University EcoCar team. 
Um, and the Eco Car Mobility Challenge is from the U.S. Department of Energy, specifically their Advanced Vehicle Technology um, Division. And it's a four-year competition for universities where they apply advanced propulsion systems as well as connect and automate vehicle technology to improve the efficiency. So in OSU EcoCars case, we first met them whenever they had a Camaro that they turned into a plug-in hybrid. Um, and they had certain specifications through the program that they had to meet, like making sure the vehicle would get up to 40 miles on electric before switching over to gas. Um, it still had to meet, you know, all the different safety standards and everything. So they're, they're completely, you know, dropping the engine out of these vehicles and just basically using the shell. But it was always fun to see people whenever they'd pull up in a Camaro and it's completely silent. Um, and now the current project is a Chevy Blazer um, and they're in year three of four. So the vehicle is still not mobile right at this moment but it's getting ready to be mobile again. So anytime they go out to displays right now, they of course have to bring the Camaro still because you know the, the Blazers in, in a state of work. The competition is wrapping up the end of year three. They're currently in the lead right in front of the University of Alabama. So we're waiting to see how that turns out for them. Um, but it's been fun to get to have their different vehicles out and have them speak at our virtual events. Um, and then just like the West Virginia Electric Auto Association, we have a website. Um, you can see the link to that. We've been working on expanding it to build out, um, in particular, our legislation information sections and our resources for EV drivers. Um, so while we don't want to, you know, reinvent any wheels and make, you know, we're not going to be the next plug share or anything, but we do want to have, um, we've got in particular a page about housing um, that has electric vehicle charging stations at it because we found that it's really difficult to look those up on the maps. Um, there, does, there isn't a way to search for apartment complexes. And so I go through <laughs> plug share and I click on every little single dot and find out where those are and any of them that are apartment complexes and I get a hold of them, make sure they're okay with being listed and then we put their contact information up on our website. Okay. And that way, you know, people can see that they can live in an apartment and still drive electric because it's one of the biggest things that we hit at events is people saying, oh, I have an apartment. I have a condo. I can't drive electric because you guys tell me I need to be able to drive it, it you know, at, to my garage at home and charge. And we want to be able to be like, well, actually, you know, we have 16 apartment complexes in town that have charging stations. So yeah, it's never mind the, the public infrastructure. <laughs> right. Which we, we do have an abundant, you know, public infrastructure here in town, but it's still nice to be able to show them that they could have the benefits of charging at home, yep. which is what everybody wants to talk about, especially this past year, you know, whenever some of the stuff wasn't open that you would go to normally and sit and charge at. Um, and then on our legislation page, we started it this spring whenever we seen that we had three pieces of legislation in the works and people were having a very hard time keeping track of if they needed to be getting a hold of the House or if they needed to be getting a hold of the Senate. Um, and then we had some confusion with members and they were writing to our U.S. senators instead yeah. of to our state senators. And, you know, of course, they're not, hard. <laughs> not getting the response that they think they will. So we wanted to make sure that everybody had simple ways to get a hold of people. The right folks, and yeah. it gives us a really great place to drop our letter writing campaigns um, because we've been involved in some fairly large ones at this point, um, especially whenever they were originally in stating the fees on our state. Um, we have a $200 electric vehicle, $200 plug-in hybrid vehicle and $100 regular hybrid vehicle fees um, just because of, you know, what they, what they think versus what is real about those things. Um, so we're not, we haven't been able to move the needle on that yet because they just basically let us know that we're too, too smart, too small of a part of the constituent base that they don't have to necessarily care about us whenever we only make up 2% or less of the population because um, we can't vote enough to do anything about them. So we're working on that though. Um, and then one of the things that we've like to do with our members is host some fun challenges and contests. Um, you'll see pages 
you know, if you do visit our website about some of the different pictures and stuff that we've had people take, um, we have a program that we call Support Local Chargers Challenge. And the background story on that is that I was reading a blog one day and this guy is out in Oregon and he has a Fiat 500. And he was used to driving, you know, this little route that he would go once a month for business. And he would use this charger at like a public library. And he pulled in on one of his trips at the very end of his range. And the, the unit was gone. <laughs> he was like, yeah. what happened to it? Where did it go? Where am I going to get a charge? And he went in and talked to the business owner. And they were like, oh, we never seen anybody using that. We didn't know anybody was using that, so we got rid of it. It was taking up one of our parking spots. And he said at that moment that he realized that there needs to be a bigger movement out there to say, hey, look, I'm here and I'm using these. And it got me thinking. And so, you know, the Support Local Chargers Challenge was born and we send our members out and we tell them, you know, if you charge it five local stations this month, make sure you list them on plug share, you know, check in on those, go inside, support those businesses, take a picture and we'll give you a prize. And we've had other businesses now joining with us and being like, Hey, on top of this prize, why don't you tell them if you're the first one this month to come charge at, and they name off their business, I'll give them a $5 gift card or a, you know, travel mug or something. And so we've had, you know, more and more involvement in that. And it's been fun to watch it kind of grow and take off and yeah. be able to support all those different local chargers. And then we've, last month, um, as I briefly mentioned, whenever I was pointing out my husband's t-shirt, we ran a program for Earth Day called Driving on Sunshine. And five of our members that have solar on their houses volunteered to be on like a map on our website of, you know, places that had solar that you could go ask questions, get a charge. And so we had some pretty good participation in that. Um, in the, fir the very first week we had one very enthusiastic member who visited all five houses, <laughs> um, had some really great conversations, submitted pictures, um, and, you know, is now excited about maybe getting, you know, solar panels on his home. He has a Kona um, electric vehicle. And so he was like, I think I want to do this now too. If everybody else can do it, yep. you know, and then one of our members, Alex Sibla has a rather popular YouTube channel with about 10,000 followers now. And he got in touch with each of the homeowners and made a film called is home solar worth it conversations with solar owners um, and got to, you know, go inside some of the homes, look at the different parts of their system. Like he came into our home to show, you know, the, what the different hubs and everything looked like. And he went into um, Tim, who's in our club, he has a Tesla Model X and three Tesla Power Walls. And so he, you know, got to ask him a lot of questions about those. And it was a fun conversation to have and everything. But, um, and then in early 2020, um, before everything in the world shut down, our group applied to the Consumer Electronics Show, CES, in Las Vegas. And we went out there on attendance credentials that we have for our club now so that we can go to different trade shows and things and we went to see all the different new prototypes of you know both electric vehicles and the you know supply equipment for those um, like we got to see the wall box Kzar which is a bi-directional unit and we got to see that in person you know about a year and a half ago now um, and then we got to see some other new technologies like NeoCharge, which is a unit that you plug into your 240 so that you can have two loads on it at once. So you could have your electric car charger on your outlet and you could have your dryer. And then it knows which one is drawing a load and it switches between those two things. Um, and we also got to meet Spark Charge, which is, we, you might have seen them now on Shark Tank. Um, they are a portable charging unit. So AAA has teamed up with them and a couple other organizations, and they're working to get those battery backups, you know, to a lot of other places um, so that people can get a charge just like you'd get, you know, a little 
tank of gas brought to you. And then the highlight for me, though, was getting to see all the new vehicles that weren't yet on market. So, like, we got to see the Aria Very in cool. person. Um, we got to see the Mustang Mach-E, which at the time was not, you know, for sale. They had those sitting in their booths along with their charging system. Um, and then the different prototype vehicle, like the Mercedes-Benz Avatar, mm-hmm. which is that was neat. the neatest concept car we'll probably ever encounter. Um, and then last, well, this spring um, was virtual for their thing, but they still had fun speakers like Mary Barra from GM. Um, she was their Good. keynote speaker, so we got to hear from her on a couple different days, as well as learning about some of the new concept cars like Scion by Sono Motors. Um, it's a solar-powered car, and unlike the Aptera vehicle, um, the Sono Motors company is putting out one that has four wheels, um, so it's it's more of a standard car, so it'll It'll fit needs that the Aptera vehicle doesn't. Um, they're only predicting, I think it's a three to 500 mile range, depending on which battery you put into mm-hmm. the Scion by Sono Motors, which not as far, but again, <laughs> looks really uh, promising with all the solar panels on that vehicle. They're, they're saying you can get it in any color as long as you pick black. Black. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and then, you know, they talk about the fact that you wouldn't have to plug in, that you could just leave your car outside and it would charge up. And it's, it's kind of fascinating to hear about those different things. That's a, that's a hail back to the old Model T, isn't it? Yeah, the you can get it in any color as long as you pick black. Definitely a old Model T reference there from them, which was kind of funny. They're a European company. So let me throw so out there. I'd like to interrupt I, you a second, if you yep. wouldn't mind. Mm-hmm. Uh, here in West Virginia, our, our uh, main emphasis the last, uh, well, since we actually reformed, is to get fast DC charging uh, in the state. We don't have any. And we're, we're now getting inquiries from local governments about uh, – uh, that may be interested in putting in fast DC charging. And I wondered if you had any recommendations for a different type of network. So I talked to uh, Chelsea Sexton and I've talked to uh, uh, EAA and got gotten some recommendations. I talked to Len, uh, Lanny Hartman over in Maryland. But uh, I wondered if you had any recommendations for, uh, for uh, how people in Ohio have gone about putting in uh, fast, you know, CCS, fast uh, DC charging uh, networks. Who's reliable? Who would you recommend that we point our local government folks uh, to uh, include on their bid list? Well, by far the largest group you're going to talk to is Electrify America. Um, they come out of the VW settlement money. Um, that's part of that diesel gate. Yeah, we have a little story about them. But as far yeah, as they, reliability goes, <laughs> that's another yeah. question with them. Um, they, yeah, see, Electrify America exists because West Virginia grad students caught VW cheating. Yeah. And so they are deliberately ignoring West Virginia. They won't nice. talk to that's anybody. Great. They won't put any chargers in West Virginia because they're a little bitter about us. Yeah, that that might be both, you know, it's hurtful, but it's also probably beneficial. They are by far the most expensive fast charge network for yes, they are. Um, consumers to use. So whenever we, whenever we travel, we tend to avoid them so much so that we bought a portable level two charger um, so that whenever we go visit <laughs> our family back in the valley, we can pass by Cambridge without stopping and then we just charge at our family's house um, because we want to be able to skip past there. I'd rather spend, you know, two days trickle charging out of a 120 than I would stop by their stations. And I've actually uh, but, tweeted that out to them um, so because they're, have, they're on my what list. What we're wondering is, do you have anything from the business side about who is good to work with? Who, who uh, can you, uh, uh, the, the no- names we have are charge point. Green In a word charge point. Yep. EA yeah. and EV go. Now, ChargePoint does not own and operate. Uh, they only sell and service uh, uh, a network, whereas EA, Greenlots, EA, and EV go will actually own the stations and, right. and uh, charge the local government a fee for installing them, things like that. But are there any other networks? Are there, besides the comments on EA and the reliability? 
I noticed that the EDGO stations yep. in Ohio, according to PlugShare, never work. Uh, I, just, I don't know that that's necessarily the case okay. for all of them. They're, they're fairly reliable. They're actually more reliable than the Green Lots stuff is yeah. out there. Okay. Is Green Lots uh, uh, in o Ohio? They are. I, yes. Yeah, the, the rep for Green Lots, his name is Michael Smucker. He is not really great at answering emails. I'm on a couple different committees with him for statewide um, steering groups for EVs, and he he answers whenever it's convenient to him. Um, one of the problems that we have with the Green Lots units is that not all of them are networked very well, um, so they're they're connections to getting a hold of things are sporadic at best um even in the city so i would probably say that you know as they're getting more spread out across you know west virginia which is a bit more rural sometimes that that may not be connectivity is a, a problem yeah i would, um, I would sure. probably steer you away from green lots only because their original setups with most of most of their locations or installations didn't actually include service contracts. So it's an install and I'm out of here. And if there are any problems with that unit, you're relying upon the business that owns that unit to get a hold of them to come out and fix it. And that just unfortunately doesn't happen unless you've got a really great working relationship with whatever business it is, business it is that you happen to be frequenting that has that charger. So yeah, Green Lots is probably maybe number three on the list, but I would say charge point EV go for sure. Um, E EA only because they're there and they they can provide the stuff, but they're not going to deal with them for yeah. right now, though. Yeah, I understand. I know well, he's right. He's well, they have really a commercial better. branch that that the uh, separate from their their mandated uh, uh, right. you know government ordered uh, network. They have mm -hmm. a commercial branch which they can add on support. But there are no others. You don't have any other people besides us four. Um. So there's a company, it's mainly out west for now, called Volta. Um, they do stations that are based with advertising on them. So they get all of those privately funded by the ads that are on the stations. They look mm -hmm. like a giant iPad um, and with the charging off of the side of them. Um, they're starting to expand to some other places. But they're not in Ohio yet. Um, I don't think they are into no, Ohio yet. yet. Um, two of the companies that didn't get brought up that are in Ohio are Blink. Blink. Um, and then I, yeah. I actually passed um, Andrew Hillman, who's the rep for our state, um, over to Robert um, in a conversation. Uh, they don't have very many fast chargers, but they do have a program for um, the level two but their level two are 11 kilowatts mm -hmm. so they're a little faster than you know some of the other ones but they had a f grant they were working on where they could get some of those installed for free um so they're definitely worth at least a follow-up conversation usually um and then there's and i reached out to andrew and, and uh, we were trying to set up a date but haven't made contact yet yeah I, I've, I've, the only thing I've ever gotten when I tried to use a blink charger was a check engine light. <laughs> oh, hmm. yeah, we have we have some at IKEA here that we do. Not a, use. Not a big footprint at all. They've only got a few few stations in in Ohio. So, so blink. blink is uh, uh, and okay. Well, thank you. I I didn't realize they were around. And Volta, is there any other anyone else besides us? Um, so we've got a set that got down that got put downtown. Um, they're by a company named Green Spot, mm -hmm. um, and they really only service like Boston and New Jersey. And then for some reason decided to put this one set of units in in downtown Columbus. Um, they stopped working about. 12 months ago and green spot still likes to put up pictures of them and everything else but doesn't like to come out and service them so while i would say that is a company i would say you know tread with caution um make sure you talk about service contracts yeah yes but, absolutely uh all our recommendations to these local governments is they have to have a service contract good call. service and maintenance con yeah. contract so we you know the, the state government does not want to be involved with credit card billing or anything like that. They want these uh, networks to take care of all that and simply send them money. Yeah. 
So from the charge point end of things, we have a group that we work with called EV United. Um, I know they're in Indiana and Kentucky. I'll talk to them and see if they also have a, you know, service person into West Virginia. Um, and if I, if they do, I'll have them get in contact with you guys. Yeah. But they help to get charge point units installed. They work to find all the grants and everything else um, for those units because the sales rep for charge point, we know him, he's actually a Columbus guy. Um, he has both a model three and a bolt. Um, so he, he's in our group, um, but Jimmy's great, but Jimmy yeah. is very busy. Stretched extremely thin. They currently have him covering like five states. Territory of five or six states. Um, so he's yeah. just on the road a ton, has a new baby. Um, so it's been kind of crazy, crazy time for getting a hold of him for different things. Um, but he's usually pretty good about trying to help find things that will fit people's needs. Um, their units, they now have 62.5 kilowatt units. Mm -hmm. Um, instead of just the 50s. So a little faster, um, not what some of these new vehicles are capable of, but better than nothing. Um, but yep. they they actually do have one in your state. We always jokingly call it the DCSC for the DC slow charge. Um, <laughs> it's at the Harley dealership in Morgan Morgantown. Pile. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, 25 kW. Yeah. It's not really yeah. very helpful. Like, that's what we, why we laughingly call it the DCSC instead of the FC because it's a slow charge. But I mean, it's still better than, you know, we, we've we stumbled into a couple of our L2s here in town yeah. are what they call waterfall effect. So if you're on the first unit and somebody else plugs in, then you split the charge. And then if somebody else plugs in, then it gets split three ways. And we've, we've sat there before whenever, you know, three, five people get plugged in and you're now down to getting one kilowatt from the unit. You got 40, 40 yeah, a 40 amp circuit with four units attached to it. So you're not getting a whole lot out of it if, if, if four people plug in. <laughs> no. So, you know, I mean, anything's, Anything's better than nothing, but yep. those are very close to being nothing at that point. So if you've got neighbors you charging, know, yeah. At, the, at those moments, then I would go find a DCSC over them any day, though I'd prefer my fast charges whenever we do do travel. So, this is, um, uh, Rick Walker, I have a question um, or comment. You were jokingly talking about DCSC. I'm not sure that's a joke. I think uh, when I came back to Maryland, <laughs> well, I bought my Bolt in Maryland and had it all planned which Chevy dealers I was going to stop and charge at, assuming that all level two was 30 or 32 amp. They were all Volt 16 amp chargers and it took me three days to get back from Maryland. Well, the same thing's true with DC charging. A 25 kilowatt is not a 350. And I think we should push plug share to create a different color icon for the DC and even the term like DCSC, I know it's still faster than AC level two, yeah. but DC level two is the fastest and DC level one uh, under 48 kilowatts includes the um, 25s. And mm -hmm. I, I think we should push that terminology. I think it's a, a good idea rather than, than a joke. I think it really would help in traveling. I would love to see, in fact, I have, uh, when I travel, I just got back from a trip to Maryland and I've wrote down the, the addresses and put them in my GPS of all the, of the chargers I thought I would need to use. Um, but I'm just going to separate those now into with a little something to say it's DCSC instead of <laughs> the, because in Morgantown, there's that single, you know, motorcycle shop and that's not going to be a big help. So I think that's a, a good idea. A second question I had, if I may, uh, when my wife bought her Kia Nero here, she just bought the hybrid. I tried to talk to her about a plug-in hybrid or even an all electric and the nearest place we could buy would have been Cincinnati. And she yep. didn't want to do that because a Kia dealer here told her she'd have to drive it all the way back to Cincinnati for all the service. Well, that, they're just saying they wouldn't do it. Right. When I bought my Bolt in 2017, there were no Chevy dealers selling a Bolt in West Virginia or even servicing it. I did find one in Kentucky and it doesn't need much service, occasional right. software update that they did for free. Well, now we have some Chevy dealers, uh, Harry Green and yes, selling bolts and servicing bolts. So it's a lot better, but um, you, how far in Maryland did you have to go to get your Kia? And were you worried about where you're gonna get <laughs> local that you can service it? 
So before we picked it up, we talked to um, Jermaine, well, it was Hatfield at the time, now they're Jermaine, Kia, um, about five miles from our house, if even that. Um, and they were already servicing some EV souls. Mm -hmm. um, they had sent guys to the special training for the battery vehicles, and they sold the plug-in hybrids. And so they had all the equipment to be able to service these high-voltage vehicles because, you know, I mean, even the battery in a regular hybrid will knock you on your ass for sure, if not kill you if you touch the wrong cables. So it's very important that they, you know that they have that those special gloves the special equipment and everything so they they had the ability to service it we lucked out in that aspect um so then we we, but just, we knew that in advance we, too yeah we had checked on that ahead of time so what we always recommend to other people because we've now had we've helped place eight people in ohio in nero evs um, before they started coming to our state in the past few months um, and then we've helped place a couple people in some other states like Colorado before they were sold there into them. And what we always tell them is to check with their local dealerships that carry the plug-in hybrid um, and see if they have service personnel for those. Because if they have service personnel for those, usually unless they get into something in depth that would involve dropping the battery out, they can handle, you know, much of anything that turns up. So um, 10 days after we purchased our Nero in, you know, Gaithersburg, Maryland, I took some road debris um, and broke our windshield. Yeah. Um, thankfully, it wasn't your fault. We had taken out some extra warranty coverage on ours because I tend to find things usually with the tires, nails, screws. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Ladders. Uh I mean, a number of things, but yeah. we, we took it in and they had to take the entire windshield out, recalibrate all of the cameras once they put the new one in. And, you know, they were, they were very excited because I was the first car with all those cameras that they were servicing. I wasn't quite as excited to be a guinea pig. May, may I interrupt you again? Yeah. Uh, we've, we've got one uh, government official on here, Gerald uh, Bergey uh, from the city of South Charleston. He's He's uh, uh, heading up their effort to look at more EV charging. And Gerald, I was wondering if you had any questions regarding uh, the fast DC, uh, fast DC uh, uh, charging networks. Uh, I don't know if you were on when they were talking about them just a little bit ago, but I wanted to make sure that Gerald got, uh, got his two bits in before we have to end this. Well, well, we, we are looking. Matter of fact, we're going to put two more – uh, chargers in at Thomas More Hospital. We're putting one in at the ice arena and one at the community center. And just this week, the mayor and I have talked about fast chargers. If we could find somebody or find some information on them, we would love to try to put one in here in the city somewhere. We already have four, and we're planning on putting at least four more in within the next couple of months. Right, right. Those are all those are all the destination chargers we have now. Uh, yes, sir. So I don't know if you heard that they, they were talking about uh, 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 people that that sell and service uh, the fast DC chargers, ChargePoint, Electrify yeah. America, EVGo, Blink, and then there's a company in out west uh called volta mm -hmm. and and their their uh, business model is to have advertising on the on the uh, uh station makes it free uh, yeah so th those are the ones and and the, we will get you uh linkage and information in next week yeah, that. that'd be I awesome just, i just wanted to make sure that you had a chance to ask any questions before our time's up well we, we definitely want to try to keep ahead of the game because we think it's important because we think it's all it's coming that way mm -hmm. with electric cars and, and we want to be on the front runner of trying to put some of these in throughout the community yes most definitely and you don't want us to all bypass you whenever we do you know drive 
through West Virginia. You don't want it to be a through. You want us to make a stop and visit some people instead of just, you know, jumping on past. I mean, right now we're planning a trip from Columbus to a little south of Miami, Florida, because um, my sister lives in Homestead. And whenever we hit Gallipolis, we'll charge up and then we're going to skip over the entire state of West Virginia and charge up again in North Carolina. Um, and that's, you know, tourism dollars that you're losing. And sure. You know, everything else, because instead of stopping there to have a meal or visit people, catch up with family, we're going to just bounce from fast charger to fast charger, you know, and that's, it's hard to say that we're doing that, especially, you know, given that we've still both have family in West Virginia, that we, you know, don't consider traveling to there as often as we go other places Can't. because of the infrastructure, you know, and it's, it's hard to help promote electric vehicles whenever you're like well you know west virginia is this little black hole that we're next to that you know you can go with your tesla but if you have anything from any of the legacy auto manufacturers you're not going to have the same service if, if uh could you give us the contact names so we have the names of companies but if you have a personal relationship yep. with any any of the people could you uh, leave a message to robert or to myself I will uh, absolutely and, do that. Yeah, that, that would really be handy. And then we'll make sure Gerald gets uh, that information. And so we want to try to move ahead as fast as we can to get West Virginia away from this uh, black charging hole that we've got right yes. now. Charging yeah. deserts, they call them. Yeah. yeah. Well, we think we've done fairly good. I know we could do a lot better. And that's why the mayor would like to, like to get awesome. a couple of the fast chargings in. Yes. Oh, yes. No, you guys have been doing really great, especially with like the program where they've got them in at the state parks. We have not yeah. been able to get the interest from our state parks the same way, which means that we have some very big charging deserts outside of any of our major metros. Um, you know, we've been talking to them and I'm like, you know, if West Virginia can do this and that that, that conversation works down in the valley because there's always that competition and rivalry. But, you know, <laughs> here in Central Ohio, they're like, West for where? And I'm like, come <laughs> on, guys. That's a great state, you know. But, well, well, and well, any other you. questions for uh, Drive Electric Ohio or, or and Mr. Berge, if you any other questions that you may have that we could try to address before we move on? No, sir. I just appreciate inviting me. You know, I'm glad to have you. I, I, I wondered if uh, everybody knows where Gerald is. Uh, he's is with South Charleston. I didn't know if everybody knew that or not. South Charleston. Yeah. Thank you, Gerald. Uh, I'm charging my car right now at one of our charging stations. <laughs> Imagine that. That's every day. <laughs> Well, wait a minute. You now you got solar panels. You get free electricity without no. going to South Charleston. My ground fault <laughs> circuit interrupter is it, it, screwed up. <laughs> oh gee. I had one more quick question, and that is, when your officers take some trips, like to Las Vegas and things like that, is that all on your dime, or does your organization help out with some of the um, travel expenses? So our organization is a very small part of a much bigger nonprofit. And so absolutely everything we do from the prizes we give out to trips that we take are on our personal money. Um, so if any of our members wanted to travel along with us, you know, we, we opened up um, the credentials to some other members and we had to let them, you know, know that they would have to pay for it um so in this january whenever it was virtual we had a member take us up on using our virtual attendance for you know ces um but otherwise those things all have to be you know out of our own money because we we have like no funds yep yeah it's okay but non-profit of a non-profit <laughs> Yeah, I've, I've, I've got to run. Thank you very much. You've been very informative and very helpful. Really no appreciate problem. it. And our contact information is on the website. So if you come up with any other questions, feel free to, you know, hit okay. us up and ask them. Uh, yeah, I'm hoping someday we can have a, some, a real meetup. You know, there's a <laughs> town in West Virginia named Tesla, and it's very close to a very nice resort state park. I'm hoping someday we can organize a meetup of several 
Uh, so everybody can take a drive to Tesla, West Virginia. That'd be fantastic. Oh, that would be cool. That's There's Rick. no houses in between the signs that say, say coming to Tesla, leaving Tesla. <laughs> it's, it's we, a, we originally met town. Rick out of your club. Um, that way he got a hold of us and was like, hey, why we should plan a big thing in Athens. That would be cool. And then as we started talking about it more, you know, COVID happened and <laughs> nobody got to travel to anywhere to visit anybody. So hopefully, yeah. you know, we're crossing our yeah, fingers Athens here. would be a great place too to yeah rally. that's what we'd looked at because we've got the Athens EV cruisers is one of our little groups so um, Charles would be a good good place <laughs> yes well, we, could, we could start planning a bunch of them you know maybe make it like an annual thing get a bunch of us together visit one state then the other state and stuff that would be cool so, yeah. I thought we meet along the border like Marietta yeah yeah. Maybe in the middle, maybe Blennerhassett Island in the middle of the river. There you go. <laughs> I don't think they have charging out there. We might have Tough some to people. drive to. <laughs> Jump no on a ferry. Way. There's barges and ferries. Yeah. There is a, uh, the city of Belpre put in a uh, J172 uh, charger. There's like two ports in the park that you can see the island from. Very okay. cool. Hey, nice. I've got to run. Thank you very much. I really yes. appreciate it. Glad to meet you, Marty. Yes. All right, guys. I know we're getting kind of close to the end of the uh, the hour. So uh, thank you again, uh, Mariah and Todd, for joining. I uh, appreciate you dropping in, sharing what Drive Electric Columbus is doing. You guys are busy. Uh, lots of good information. All right. So uh, in the next few minutes, just anybody, uh, we've already kind of talked about some of the charging stuff, which was the other thing on the agenda. Uh, but uh, there were some new EVs that kind of came out this past week and just wanted to throw those up there. Anybody uh, uh, have anything they want to share? Anything they found interesting with the new reveals? Anybody put in a deposit for a new EV? I, I will say that uh, uh, Nitro did order their Tesla for a police car. All right. This week. Need, they, they went ahead and ordered it. Okay, great. Yeah. Gerald, uh, uh, I was in South Charleston and saw a Ray of Four plug-in hybrid charging over to Fairfield in, I think. Uh, you, you don't know who that is, has that or anything, do you? No, sir. I, I, I don't. I wish they'd use the plug share more often and tell us who it was and how long they were here. Yeah. What about some signage to put on these chargers to say, hey, please check in on plug share? Yeah, we could do that. That's yeah. not a new. That'd be a good idea. Yeah. It's because it's it is unfortunate that a lot of folks don't check in and and you really don't know and you, you it's been six months since somebody left a check in so you're wondering is this thing even still working or what? <laughs> are yeah. your units there um, on the network or are they non-networked units? I would say most are non-networked. Okay. Because as I say, I know that like any of the charge point units, they have a really great back end program where even people that don't check in on plug share, they can, you know, the people that have those pieces of equipment in front of their businesses can track exactly who's charging, how long they're charging, how much power they got, you know, if it did accrue any fees on that charge, then it tells them, you know, what the fees that they collected off of it look like and stuff. So it's sometimes the networked ones are good for that, but um. in some research that I did, it was over a hundred dollars a month to have a networked charger. When you pay 750 or $800 for the station, it's hard to pay 1200 a year just to be networked. If you don't really need that for access control. Um, right. A lot of places, uh, if they're going to charge, it's a different story, but if it's going to be given away, it's, uh, it's not. Well, I, I've uh, got a use uh, case scenario to, uh, for, to boast that, to say that it's needed. Uh, People's Bank in Vienna, West Virginia has a charger, but I have its charge point. I have been unable to ever charge at it unless they come out and unlock it with their older card because it is off the network when you call them. And that's, so that's a problem that they don't get their updates or anything. So um, not sure if that's because they're not paying a fee. Um, you think they would be able to take it off of the network, uh, you know, se segment out their network at the office there at the back branch. So. Well, that's, that's something I can 
you know, see if Jimmy is willing to have a conversation with you guys on, um, since that is the, I'm pretty sure he covers West Virginia as well. I know he has Pennsylvania, Ohio, Indiana, um, and like Kentucky. I'm not sure, you know, which other states he swings over into um, as the charge point rep, but I'll, I'll have him follow up with you guys to some degree, at least to, you know, start conversations and give you that contact point as well. Um, and see if there's something they can do to help you know service those older units or at least you know push out some information to them so that they do work a little bit better because I know we have some older units in town and I don't I don't remember encountering any issues quite like that with those but you know it's probably a configuration setting on on the charger itself to just allow anybody to drive up and charge um yeah, that's unfortunate. And you're probably limited to business hours too, right? So, or bank hours, <laughs> bankers hours. <laughs> to the whole group, a couple updates on my trip on the way back from Maryland. I did stop at Flatwoods and talked to the DMV. And yes, they rent that property. They don't own it. And they referred me across the street, across the interstate to the Mer West Virginia Department of Health and Human Resources. And I contacted them and they also just rent. But I did write, uh, or through a contact through the website, the owners of the um, outlet properties across the way, uh, telling them not for DC pass charge, but what we had discussed at our business meeting, that they could probably afford to put in some level two, AC level two chargers and get some better um, business. And the last thing is I was considering stopping at Cafe Semino for a wonderful meal and a charge, but they've been up for sale since last uh, August and the restaurant and the hotel are closed. So even though on plug share, it says it's wide open, there's been no uh, check-in since August of last year. And I don't think you can go to the Cafe Semino anymore and, and get a charge. And yet it's still open on plug share. I, I hope people are not dependent upon it. Hmm. I have to run, but I do appreciate your time. And, and uh, if, we can help in any way. We're, we're definitely would love to try to help. All right. Well, you guys ought to keep an eye on what Nitro is doing with that police car. Maybe uh, it has a couple of South Charleston uh, electric police vehicles. Yeah, that'd be good. I wouldn't have to service them every day then. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Great job you. you're doing, Gerald. Scott Thank Hamilton. You. Thank you. And speaking of police cars, uh, Mariah, I did get your note, uh, the introduction to the Logan Police Department and their Tesla police cars. Uh, so I'll, I will reach out and pass that contact along. Um, and real quick for Larry, uh, there's a Logan Police Department in Ohio that uh, has Tesla police vehicles. So we could uh, maybe we could pass that along to your Nitro contact and have them reach out if they're interested in more information about uh, you know, maintenance and operations and, you know, any kind of issues or, you know, best practices that might be recommended. Yeah, one of the okay, interesting yeah. things that Logan is working on right now is installing a microgrid system um, where they'll have solar panels and, you know, store up some of their own power so that they do not encounter demand charges whenever they do need to fast charge those Tesla units. So that was something that they immediately seen that, you know, that while we trickle charge at home, we, you know, do a level two charge at home and it doesn't really affect our power bills that for those commercial um, mm -hmm. places, whenever they do need to have a fast charge that those demand charges can hit them pretty hard. So it's, it's been interesting to watch them building out, not just the vehicles, but then their, their infrastructure on the police department even. Okay, awesome. Robert, you asked if anyone had put any reservations down on any of the new releases and so forth. To keep our family's options open, we have a reservation for the Ford F-150, also the Cybertruck and the Aptera, but don't know that we'll use them all, but it creates options going forward for the four members of our family. All right. Awesome. I'm getting ready to spring for the for the uh, Hyundai Ionic Five, uh, uh, possibly from the South Charleston um, location rather than Dutch Miller here. Is uh so there's going to be some West Virginia dealers carrying the Ionic Five? Uh, they told me at at uh, Don or uh, Joe Holland that they would, 
but um, the, the, the dealer here, the Dutch Miller Kia, uh, Hyundai, Chevy Hyundai, didn't know, nobody there knew whether they would ever carry it. Okay. And they're very anti-EV. Yeah, I can imagine. I'm kind of surprised Joe Holland would, but maybe being closer to Charleston, maybe that makes them a little and more I open. May have, I may have spoken to an underling who didn't know the politics. At least it's not a Bill Cole unit. Is there any uh, link of or any information on contact or is there any information about that Logan? Uh, what kind of a yeah, I, I've, I've got the I've got a contact Larry uh, uh, email address and everything, so I'll I'll pass that along. Okay, appreciate that. All right, guys, well, we're to about to... yeah, we're about the top of the hour, so uh, any last minute questions, issues, uh, news that anyone wants to share? I just want to thank uh, I'd our like to, for coming. And yes. Mariah and Todd, thank you so very much for joining. It was very informative. And I have a sister in Dayton. I'm going to make sure her family, which I think her daughter is starting to consider a Tesla. She saw ours. And uh, they're going to probably electrify their family, hopefully, uh, as far as transportation. So. There's a great group in Dayton called Drive Electric Dayton, um, and they, mm -hmm. they're they very enthusiastic as well. We, we usually run neck and neck with them on who's bigger in size membership-wise. So I think they're <laughs> yeah, just a, good a little over there. 300 right now, and we're at 350. So we've pulled, we've pulled into the lead for the minute. But, yeah, they've got, they've got a great group. We, we have a lot of cross people on our list, you know, like Harold that was – you know, on the call the other night where he's in like the Cincinnati Dayton groups and then he's in our group as well, you know, so it makes it fun. Yeah. Yeah. And I have a connection to Northern Ohio. I grew up in Lorraine and Vermilion from yeah. all the way through middle school and just loved it up there. Very cool. Hey, John, uh, can you uh, give us a update on your status of your solar installation? Uh, next time would be the best. Taylor's supposed to show up on Monday, and they should have it ready for inspection by Wednesday or Thursday. So. Okay. All right. So we got a we've got a new uh, a new uh, driving on sunshine candidate. John Averill's putting in a big solar system to go with his Bolt. So uh, yeah, solar and EVs everywhere. Robert, if you get a chance, if you're willing to, give me your address and your you know, home address, and then I can right. drop you out some of our stickers so that you can share those with people that have, you know, because we've got some extra stickers from yeah. driving on sunshine. We'll send you sure. some yeah, so you can great. share those with people whenever you have, whenever you get to have physical things again. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah, I'll drop that to you. I'll be headed to Ann Arbor in a week, and most of that trip will be through Ohio. I'll go through uh, Lancaster, Columbus, Findlay, Toledo, and then on up into Ann Arbor and then over to South Lyon uh, mm -hmm. to visit, visit family and then come back a couple of days later. So I'll report on how the charging was. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> well, if you want to, if you want to grab a coffee or anything, feel free to shoot us a message and we'll see if yeah. we can overlap with you. All great. right, everyone. Appreciate all the time, all the great information, and uh, we will see you next month. Thanks for having us. All right. Thanks, everyone. Take care. Thanks.